Greetings, welcome to a little Seattle Kraken season wrap. Rob Simpson along with Glenn Dreyfus and the U.S. Mail Truck <laughs> as we talk about the Kraken and their 2022-23 season for SeattleHockeyInsider.com. And what a season it was, but there are some topics I think the fans need to be aware of. So it's time. It is time to bring these items up. Um, Glenn, a special correspondent, has done some writing for us. He's also the host of Hockey Time Machine, which is this outstanding product that's been based in Toronto for a long, long time. Yes. Paul Patsku? Correct. And uh, I just want to throw this out there before we get started. You need to watch, if you want an education in hockey about Bill Daly, Deputy Commissioner of the NHL, all the topics, clean, clear, concise, and fun conversation on many of the topics that... Uh, the league and fans are confronted with today. Watch his interview. I'll put the link in the story that is above this video. All right, so check that out. It'll be good for you. Um, let's start with the goaltending, most important position on the ice. You wrote a piece the other day or today or yesterday about Philip Grubauer and uh, his impact. Very impressive. 5.9 million for a few more seasons. So the question is, Glenn, what happens with the backup position? Martin Jones, contract up, cost 2 million. He's out. Or is he out? <laughs> Three point, what five, for Chris Drieger, uh, with one season remaining? Do they keep him? The question is, what do they do <laughs> if they don't keep him? Correct. Because, what are you going to do for a backup goalie? Yep. And how much is it going to cost? And, what do you create in terms of a goalie controversy? if you bring in somebody to challenge Grubauer, who still got four more years on his deal. Yeah. Well, Martin Jones did a nice job. The idea was not to have Martin Jones take over for him, but he ultimately did for a couple of months as an injury replacement and then just got hot and was part of that winning streak into January after the new year. It was pretty amazing. But you can't really count on that happening again. And you can't find necessarily a, whatever he is, a 32, 33-year-old netminder for two million bucks who's going to give you that type of quality of play. Now, I brought this up to Ron Francis in the group media scrum, and I, then I brought it up to him again afterwards. I said, hey, as it is right now with Drieger and Gruby, you're spending almost nine and a half million dollars on your goaltenders. That's the reality. They're under contract. Gruby has a no trade. Drieger has a modified no trade. So I said, well, would you explore the options of maybe moving Drieger? Um, and he didn't really answer that question directly. But he did bring up the fact that if he were to send him down, doesn't matter how much the contract is worth, you get to deduct 1.1 million ish uh, off the deal if he goes down. So that would take his cap hit from three and a half to about 2.4. Okay, but then you got to find a goalie. This is this is with the mindset that you're going to find a goalie to replace him, right? For for cheap or pretty cheap. First of all, I was told there would be no math. Right. <laughs> but since Sorry. you brought it up, one of the things Grubauer said about the playoffs was how much he enjoyed the grind, how much he enjoyed playing every other day, and that he played better when he played more. Yep. So the other thing you have to consider is you don't want to bring somebody in who you expect to play 40 games. Grubauer, your number one, is telling you he's going to do best if he gets... 50 to 60 starts yep. in the regular season because he talked so much about how getting in a rhythm is what made his game better in the postseason. So again, how much do you want to spend, short of Grubauer having another injury, yep. for a player who will spend most of the time on the bench? Right. It just depends on what the priority is. Is it because they don't trust Drieger that they want to bring somebody else in and they would move him down? I almost get that feeling because why would, Why else would he bring it up? And I've actually brought this up before. If you were to drop him down, you're still spending $2.5 million on him to bring in another goalie. So it's interesting what the motivation might be there. Do they bring someone up from Coachella Valley? Is this a, is it a Joey Decord opportunity? If you know, Which would be, you know... Kind you know, the goalie version of Ty Cartier, you know, but those type of moves don't happen all the time. Right. My guess is you stay with what you got because 
for financial reasons, if not for best quality reasons, that's kind of what you locked into. Yeah, I, well, they have cap. They have plenty of. Cap, it sounds like they have plenty of cap space. And, and as you look at the initial, I don't like doing math either, folks. To be honest with you, I usually don't like these conversations. But they're going to have room to operate. So maybe that's why they might play with their goaltending situation. That'll be one to watch. Uh, let's move forward on the ice surface. Next most important, and, you know, goalies, and then everything up the middle is is the most important element for a hockey team. But we'll go to the decor. Um, very healthy decor. So. You know, the Colorado Avalanche had about 400 plus man games lost to injury this year. The D core, I believe at the end of the season when I did the little bit of math, I think that core group of six, they missed a grand total of 21 games. That's how many times Gustavs Olafson or Kale Fleury or Jacob Magna had to fill in. That's it, 21. That's amazing for chemistry and consistency. Is that gonna happen again? <laughs> Boy, I don't know. That's something I don't know if you want to count on it. Mm -hmm. But Susie, Carson Susie, is an unrestricted free agent. I think you bring him back, give him a little bump. He did a nice job. You got your core. Now, do you slide one of those guys down a little bit and bring in a higher quality defenseman? The question for the Kraken is, do you disrupt the chemistry? And if you're going to do that, Will it be an upgrade, and how does that fit into the structure? And also, how does the player you you bring in fit into the room? And then the other question besides that is, well, who's out there? Yep. Um, those are the type of things that Ron Francis and his staff are going to spend the summer working on. But this is a business. It's a brutal business just because... The team had 100 points in the regular season and they got to the second round of the playoffs. You're tempted to say, hey, let's run it back. Let's bring the gang back and do it again next year. Yeah. But you can't look at it that way. You have to say, can we even incrementally improve? And if we can, we have to do it. Uh, by the way, it's going to be different just based on the fact that Vince Dunn is a restricted free agent who's going to require probably in the ballpark of about seven million per season. So his contract will be negotiated this summer. He was outstanding, 64 points, second leading scorer on the team. You thought he was a little shaky in the postseason. You know, the postseason is a new experience and it's a new level of intensity as we hear. As an alpha male, because he's been through it as a depth guy with St. Louis winning a Stanley Cup, but right now yeah. he and Larson are the top pair in Seattle. That's right, and they really emerged as a shutdown pair, but that's a heavy responsibility. As a number one, you're going against better opposition, and certainly in the playoffs against Colorado, he took a little bit of time, I think, to get to his game, as the coaches like to say, yep. but Undeniably, his body of work is rewarding uh, of an upgrade in pay yeah. and another chance. And he and Larson worked well together. I think Dunn really came into his own once uh, the former captain, Mark Giordano, was traded yeah. and the opening was presented to him and he took the puck and ran with it. Yeah, and as uh, Ron Francis alluded to during the media session also, you know, hey, reality is these guys all making four, five, five and a half. <laughs> that, that, those numbers go up as your team yeah. finds success. And Vince Dunn will be the first example of that yeah. <clears throat> based on what just took place and also who's, who's due a contract. And he would be numero uno in that category. Uh, <clears throat> so let's bounce up front now. And here's the other elephant in the room. And it was tap danced around a little bit by the media. Um, I was going to bring it back up because I think it's deserving of it. But let's face it, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a McKinnon or a Connor McDavid. It just needs to be a couple of game breakers. Uh, th that's what the Kraken need up front. Now, we brought up Andre Burakovsky a few times. He was injured during the regular season. They didn't have him for the postseason. Okay, that's fine. But you still need one or two more solid guys. Perfect example. Colorado's not a perfect example because you have you got McKinnon, and he's just out of this world. <laughs> Dallas is a great example. Yeah. That was maybe the ultimate difference. Their horses, Rupa Hintz, they got the rookie Andrew Johnston, Jamie Benn, Joe Pavelski, 38 years old. I mean, there's just a, it's a higher echelon of talent 
than what the Kraken can exhibit. The depth scoring is wonderful, the balance is wonderful, but I think to take that next step, you combine that hard work with maybe two more guys that can really light things up, and that's something that the team does not have right now. And you can't necessarily count on Jared McCann necessarily contributing 40 goals next year. He had 27 his first season with the crack and 40 this past season. But that's as many goals as he had in the seven seasons prior to that. Yep. So you don't want to count on him being a 40-goal man. And when he was out, the Kraken didn't really have anyone to replace him. Burakovsky is a goal scorer, but he's streaky. Yep. And isn't necessarily the person you want to count on to be the go-to guy. Yep. So, And is he that next echelon? Is he that next mm. echelon? Mm. Mm. You know, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. He's in, an important piece. I think where they miss Burakovsky was on the power play. Yep. I think he was a guy who had the puck, was was happy to be in possession of the puck and yeah. distribute, yep. and they missed that. But five on five were the crack and were the strongest. I'm not seeing, we, we know looking at the Maple Leafs, you don't need a top heavy list of superstars who, if they don't perform, you're completely out of the running. But yes, you do need star talent of some kind. And again, Francis has to balance that and see who's available and then compete with all the other teams that are looking for the same thing. Yeah. A couple of thoughts on that, by the way. It's kind of funny. Andre Burakovsky held on to the puck too much. Remember that? We forget that there were, there were times it was like, dude, you got you to give up the puck. Like, <laughs> the best example was the overtime against Winnipeg, and they lost. He, he just held it too long, lost it, turned it over, and they lost. And then they went on to win the next, God, three, four, five yeah. overtime games. But uh, he tended to hold the puck too long. Obviously, he was still very successful. So it, that that's an upgrade. Um, the other element that you were just, just discussing in just terms of systems, like how does it impact your systems if you bring in these personalities or these snipers or whatever? They have to fit that mold, that forecheck, that, that hard work mentality. I guess you have to stick with that that. Uh, mental makeup of the individual and of the team. And by the way, the Leafs, prime example of a team that does have upper echelon talent up front, but they're, let's just call them soft. I'm just going to call them, go ahead and call them soft. They just don't, it's a country club. Uh, and it's why they don't find success. They're just not a hard, they're not the Kraken as a term, work ethic, forecheck. They're just not. If you can find high end talent, that works its arse off. Sometimes you have to change the culture or at least Modify. accommodate yeah. the culture. There's a reason when Ken Griffey was with the Mariners, he got a recliner at his <laughs> stall and the right. other players didn't yep. because he was who he was. So you can't be so rigid to... You know, everybody gets treated the same. Everybody does KP duty yep. <laughs> in this kitchen. So that's the plus and the minus of having a star, a real star on your team. What the Kraken will also be hoping for is that their young players, who are relatively inexpensive, can also lift their game and be that. It's something we see in the NFL. You want the rookies to come in. You want the players on their entry level contracts to come in so that they can fit into the salary cap and lift your franchise while they're still affordable. Yeah. By the way, uh, of all the additions, we always bring up Bjorkstrand, Schultz, Jones that came in to help this team. You know, Matty Beneers obviously emerged as a rookie, and it'll be interesting the Shane Wright watch to just to see uh, what the right handed centerman, because obviously, perfect world, a couple years from now. You got a lefty righty, Beneers right, top two centerman. Holy, that has unbelievable potential. I wonder about his, his mental uh, acuity, is that the right word, for the game of hockey and where he is that way in his 200 foot game and all those other things, because that's obviously, we didn't have a problem with that with Matty Beneers. He was a 200 foot player. Uh, a lot has been asked of Beneers at 20 years old. Yeah. Shane Wright 
I believe was scratched for one of the Coachella Firebirds AHL Oof. games. And could he be potentially a trade piece to get one of those high-end veterans? Yep. And part of this goes to, did the Kraken's success this year, which moved ahead their plan maybe faster than Ron Francis had anticipated, to keep that momentum going, does he have to his accelerate his acquisition of high-end players? Because one thing this season did was it created expectations. Yep. Yeah, and it, well, it definitely means he's going to have to make some moves here to, to kind of answer some of those questions that we brought up. Shane Wright is an interesting topic moving forward, and you start to wonder, well, why did he drop from first overall guaranteed to fourth overall? Seemed like a steal at the time. We'll find out if that's the case. And also, we're not writing him off necessarily and mm -hmm. poo-pooing the kid because, you know what, the development track is different for each individual, and maturity is different for each individual, and hockey sense and intelligence can be different for each individual. So who knows? This could, he could be a superstar in three seasons, and maybe he's just not there yet, and we'll see, we'll see where that leads. So there you have it, goaltending, D, and uh, forwards. The three main topics really regarding those three positions. The goaltending thing fascinates me. I'm going to write about that in the next day or two. And Glenn will be contributing a little something here once again. We're sitting outside the Kraken Community Iceplex right now, having just wrapped up our uh, lunch and our session with uh, Ron Francis. This is going on your OnlyFans, right? This is going on, yeah. This is going on the SeattleHockeyInsider.com website. And uh, yeah, the OnlyFans, is that thing, that's still going, cranking? That's a big thing? I don't I don't think I've... Yeah, it's still cranking, I've never been, Rob. I've never been on there. I've been too busy. Uh, thanks, fans. Um, we'll be in touch uh, with you regarding all these topics uh, in more of an in-depth fashion with our fingertips on the keyboards, and uh, we'll be saying hello to you down the road. We'll also say hello to you from the draft in Nashville uh, and very likely the uh, combine in Buffalo, New York for some of the prospects prior to the draft. So there's never... A, a dull moment, uh, regardless of the time here. Glenn, thank you. My pleasure. There he is, Glenn Dreyfus, man of the world, myth, legend. Uh, Rob Simpson with Glenn, SeattleHockeyInsider.com. Thanks for uh, a wonderful season, fans, and uh, we'll see you very soon.